Can you hear me? <clears throat> Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. I want you to hear everything I said. Is it loud? Yeah. Good to be back in the house of the Lord. Good to be at Tennessee Ridge. Good to see each and every one of you. I missed you last week. So happy to be with my family today. Everybody have a good Thanksgiving. I hope I didn't miss anybody. If I did, I'm sorry. I called and you didn't answer me. I couldn't help it. <laughs> I had a good time the other morning calling everybody. I hope I didn't aggravate nobody. But if I did, I'm sorry. It was very nice. Yeah. We appreciated it. During Advent, we recall how God, our love, came into the world as a gift of love. We remember that God is faithful. May his gospel fill you with hope. We remember that God is merciful. May his compassion fill you with peace. We remember that God is bountiful. May his grace fill you with joy. The overflowing blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be poured out upon you and upon your family and friends during this season of great joy and thoughtful the year to come. Amen. I love these readings. I hope y'all enjoy them too. You get it on your bulletin if you would just read it. <laughs> we got scriptures if you would just read it. <laughs> but the thing of it is you read it and you don't do it. It don't do no good to read the Bible throughout and not live it. Not put it in your heart. Because that's what it's all about. Today is Advent beginning. The season coming up of the birth of our Christ, our Savior, Jesus Christ. But today we're going to put him on the cross. Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, has come down from heaven, died, went to the cross, come alive, went back to heaven. If he had not done that, we would not have a way to be with God. When Jesus Christ died, he comes back alive. He went to heaven to be with his Father, where he was. One day, he is coming back to this world to live with us forever and ever if we repent our sin and live for him. I think of the parable that was read there. Two men is going to be in the field. One he's going to take up to heaven. The other one is going to go down to hell. You ever think about that? Two women are going to be grinding at the mill. He's going to take one up to heaven. The other one he's going to send to hell. And where's hell the last part? Oh boy. We're going to the 16th chapter of John. And we'll read a little bit to you. Not to say a little few words. But I'm so thankful. I am so thankful that Jesus Christ come into my life. I'm so thankful that he allows me to be a shining star to others. I'm so thankful when he's called me to come to a pulpit. I didn't know what living was until I did. I feel like I've always been pretty good, but I wasn't good enough. But today I said, Here, Lord, send me, and I'll do your will. And from that day forward, I have tried to do the will of my Father. I'll let other things go on this world to take care of his word. I know I'm getting a time in my life that. I might can find other things to do. I might can sit in my recliner, go downhill, but I can come to the house of the Lord and I can be so happy. Now this thing right here, in case you're wondering what it says, it says he's counting on you. If you're ready, he's counting on you. He's not just counting on me, he's counting on you. Why do we come to church? To learn his word. Why do we come to church? To make friends with others. Why do we come to, to make friends because when we get to heaven, 
They need all the friends that we've got down here. They sent me to Tennessee Red Charge, so I can gain a whole bunch more friends. You say, I was sitting in that old recliner just wondering, what am I going to do? Now, they would get out and do what they used to do. But I still get up and go. 16th chapter of John. Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. You just don't want to offend nobody. I don't want to offend nobody. You don't want to offend nobody. But anyway, he's telling his disciples, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. So when it does happen, you won't be offended. He's talking to everybody going to the cross. They don't know that yet. I believe God put it in their mind that they couldn't understand all that until now. And now Jesus wants them to know what's fixing to happen or they won't be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogue, yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you they think they do it for God's sake. Why? Because they don't know God. People that's going against you, they don't know God. If they did, they put love in your heart. That's what it takes, love in your heart. And these things they do unto you because they have not known the Father or me. So when you get to know the Father, you're going to be good. If you don't know him, you may not be. But these things I have told you that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you. I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, so that when time comes, you're going to remember what I said. He can put things in our mind to make us remember if we're only alive. So you'll remember that I told you of them, and these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was weak. I didn't tell you all these things when I was with you because I was with you. I was carrying the truth. Just like when we turn our lights over, he going to carry us through. But now I go my way to him. That's sent me. And none of you ask me whether goest thou. You're not asking me where I'm going, but I'm going to tell you. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Now I've told you enough that sorrow is filling you because you think they know that I'm going to leave you. But you don't understand yet that I'm going to come back and be with you. You see, people talk, and I've read it, I've been reading it this way. Did Jesus have to die? Did Jesus have to die? Yes, he did. Did he have to die? No, he had a choice. Jesus had the choice the same we have. We can live for him or we cannot. But Jesus had to die or we could live. We're going to have to die so we can come back to life and live again with Jesus in heaven. That's, that's the good part of all of this. When we know Jesus Christ is our personal Savior. You see, when God made heaven and earth, when God put Adam and Eve in the garden, he put them there for his pleasure. He didn't put them there to die. If they would have lived a life like they should have, they would have never died. But Satan come along. The choices was there. Satan come along and taught the Eve and take the bite of the apple. And that made it, well, we would all have to die. But if she had never ate that apple, nobody would have died. We'd have been living for God. But thank God He sent His Son that we could have life hereafter. And so Jesus came and went to the cross. There was no way to heaven. All the saints beforehand, He went to Abraham's bosom. All the sinners went into hell. But now Jesus has come along and He's going to go to the cross and that's going to be for us. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. See? The truth. That's what we need more than anything. It is expedient for you that I go away. It's good for you. It's good for you that I go away. If I go not away, 
the Comforter, who's the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, will not come unto you. If I don't go away, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter won't come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So when Jesus died, go to heaven. Remember in Pentecost, overnight, all the going on, that's when the Holy Spirit comes down. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. He'll take care of the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment and of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you save me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. The prince, who's the prince of this? Satan. Satan is judged at the cross. Jesus defended him at the cross. He's still around. He's going to be here till Armageddon comes along. And I don't know when that's going to be. I don't care when it's going to be. As long as I can talk to somebody to know their personal Savior, Jesus Christ, so they can be in heaven with me someday. That's my job. That's what I want. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. If we knew everything in this Bible, we'd go crazy. We couldn't comprehend all the things that's in it. But you know, Satan knows it just like Jesus did. Satan used the Bible scripture against Jesus. When Jesus came back out of the forty, so when he jumped down off this ledge, he could be saved. Jesus said, No, nah, you can't do that. How bad when he comes, the spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself but so whatsoever. He shall hear that he shall speak, and he shall you things to come. Just like Jesus, the Holy Spirit, everyone, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all of them to God here. All of them got instruction from God, the main man. He told them what to do, what to say, I, I fully believe with all of my heart, he tells me what to say. There's no way I can get up here if I, if I didn't if I didn't know. I've not got all the knowledge from school, training from Methodist or all these other things. I thank God in my life he taught me what I know. I believe and I have faith in my Heavenly Father that he wouldn't tell me something to do any wrong. I've always worried about the biggest thing I've worried about for you. That I might guide you wrong. And if I guide you wrong, I believe I'll pay for it. So I gotta be careful and I I, I, I just I just don't want to say nothing wrong. And I don't want to say nothing without God. Just like a preacher told me one time, I said, How do you know when to quit? He said, One time you're keeping his word. And when he takes the word away from me, I'm gonna shut it get up and do it. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine. He's going to glorify me when he receives all that. He, will, he shall glorify me. For he re shall receive of mine. And shall show unto you all things that the Father hath upon mine. So Jesus said, Everything the Father's got is mine. Everything I got is my kids. Well, I'm so thankful. Therefore said I too that he shall take a man and show you and be you. So see, Jesus said the Holy Spirit shall take everything from him so from you. A little while you shall not see me. And again a little while you shall see me. Because I go to the Father. You see, in a little while Jesus is going to cross. In a little while, I'm going to come back. But then I'm going to go to my Heavenly Father, and then I'm coming back, and I'm going to sit on my throne. That the Jews were looking for when I come down the first time, and I, mean, I come to the full city. They say, Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. He's alive. He's going to sit on the throne and then he's going to welcome all of us Christian people. And to see he had to die to do that. 
That was a plan God had. You see, God's got a plan for everything. God knows everybody. God knows exactly what you're thinking right now. Well, thank Him for life. Thank Him for love. Thank Him for truth. And He just got through telling you. Jesus said, everything that belongs to the Father belongs to me. And I'm passing it down to my spirit. And the spirit's going to take care of you. I talk about this an awful lot too. And I've always prayed to my Heavenly Father, which I need to do. But you know, the Spirit's living with me, and that's God. God is the Spirit. The Spirit's a man, a person, a body. So, Holy Spirit helps me. And the Holy Spirit can talk to God. But I can talk to Him too. Because of Jesus and the cross. The cross is the main thing in this world. It's the best thing in this world. People hate the cross, but that's the worst bit of what you can have. Supplication. Jesus supplicated. He supplicated on the cross. That's the reason they broke the thieves' feet so they could give away and, and, and die. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he said to us? Talking about himself. What, what's he telling us? They still couldn't understand everything he was saying. They said, therefore, what is this that he said? A little while. We can't tell what he said. You know, we don't always understand what God is saying to us. But we got to have the faith. We got to have the faith. It's not always going to be hunky dory. It's not always going to be beautiful. He promises, he promises troubles and trials. He says we're going to have them. But he said, I'll take care of you. Just put your faith in me. I'll take care of you. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and he said unto them, Do you inquire among yourself with that that I said? He turned around and asked his disciples, what are y'all talking about? What am I saying? A little while, and you shall not see me. And again, a little while, you shall see me. So Jesus turned around and said, he knows. They were not talking to him, they were talking among themselves, but he knew what they were saying. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. You're going to be sorrowful and I'm going to, but it's going to turn to joy when I come back and bring you home. <coughs> A woman, when she is in travail, she got sorrow because her hour has come. Ooh. Jesus turned the hour on the woman, didn't he? She paid, she suffered very for that eight hour. Adam, or eight that eight hour. I'm getting confused now. But as soon as the hour is come, as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remember no more. Jesus suffered. Jeremy suffered. But when the hour came and he went home, he remembered no more. The anguish of joy for the man that's born in the world. And you know, therefore, have sorrow. You now have sorrow. But I see you again. And your heart shall rejoice. And your joy, no man can take away. Well, this, can we have any more promises to you, brother? Oh. One day, our joy, and no man can take it away from us. We won't have to worry about all the troubles and trials. But what we got to do, we got to live for Jesus to get there. Follow me. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No man can come to the Father except by me. I ask and you shall receive. Oh. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. You can ask God. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall ask the Father in my name, he will give. <coughs> you don't have to ask me no more. You can ask the Father in his name. I guess that's the reason we say in the name of Jesus. I hear a lot of people praying, don't, don't, don't like to say that. Here's are the other two. Have you asked nothing in my name? Before here, you've done it in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be fulfilled. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs and parables. But the time come when I shall no more speak unto you in parables. But I shall show you plainly of the Father. Jesus said, I've talked to y'all in parables a long time. But pretty soon now, I'm going to start telling you the truth. I'm going to tell you like it is. I want you to plainly know. And at that day you shall ask my name, and I say nothing unto you. You don't have to ask in Jesus. You have to ask for God. That I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you. Because you have loved me. The Father loves you because you love Jesus. And I believe that I came from God. So we have to believe that Jesus came to this world. He came from God. And we believe it. His disciples said to him, Lo, now speak of thou plainly. And speak of no proverb. He said, Boy, now we know what you're saying. We know what you mean. We understand plainly. I came forth from the Father. And I'm coming to the world again. Oops. Right now, he doesn't come to the Father. I'm going to come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said to him, Now, speak as I plainly. You don't speak no proverb. Now we are sure. Listen to this. Now we are sure that thou knowest all things. And needeth not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest from God. From all of these sayings, Jesus, you told us now, we believe, we know you come from God. And that's what we have to know today. We have to know that Jesus Christ come from God, came to this world as a child that we're fixing to come up on the season right now. Drove up with his kids, brothers, sisters. They didn't believe he who he was. He preached in the hometown. They still didn't believe, but they come to believe. And I'm still looking for his sister's name, and I can't find it. I know his brother's name, but I can't find it. Don't bring the tears to my eyes. There's one I can't see to read. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for being with us during this week. You'll have us now. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Do you now believe? And I'm asking you, Do you now believe? You have to. We have to believe if we want to be in that heavenly hour. We can't sleep through our sermons. We got to. You got me on this mic so you can hear this. I, I, I. I'm going to touch the sleep. <laughs> God loves us. God loves us. You know, I lay in my chair a lot of times. I'm asleep talking to God. Ruby look over at me and you're asleep. And I said, no, I wasn't asleep because I know what I was doing. God is good to us. He's good for us. He loves you. He wants you. He's after you. He's doing everything he can to get you to be with him in heaven someday. And he's coming. That's what he just got through said. Jesus and do you now believe? Behold, the hour cometh. Yea, now it's coming, now come, that you shall be scattered. Listen. Jesus is going to the cross. 
He's got his 12 people with him. And that day, you're going to be scattered. You ever stop and think about that part of it? His disciples in North Carolina, that they scattered out. John stayed with him. John stayed with his mother. Remember on the cross, they sent John to the Lord, take care of him. John took his mother and went to his house. Every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone. We're not alone, is We're not alone. We got spirit. We got God living with us. All we got to do is let you come alone. Live for it. Jesus said, I'm not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulations. Remember that. These things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In Jesus you might have peace. But in the world you shall have tribulation. What's that tell you? You're going to have troubles. You're going to have sorrows. But in me, it's going to be good. Be ye of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have defeated Satan. Yep, Satan's still around. He's going to be around for long as but stop and think about it. We believe on these scriptures. Jesus Christ went to the cross, crucified, dead, buried, raised up, spent 40 days, and then went to his Father, and now he's coming back. We're going to be raptured up. Tribulation coming along, the first half of it. I believe there'll be some come over and turn here. The last time they're going to be set in the Then they're going to have all the good. The sinners is going to come before the great white throne with Jesus sitting on it. And they're going to tell him, Oh, I was good to my neighbor. I gave money. I done plowing. I done crop raising. And he's going to look at them. But you didn't repent. I never knew you. And cast them and the devil into the lake of fire forever, ever, and ever. But before that, as Christians, we're going to go for him too. We're going to be judged too according to our works. Not according to our faith, but according to our works. So we're going to have a good judgment. The sinner's going to have a bad. And then we're going to live forever and ever and ever, pleasing our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Oh, I think you've been with me, Father. I think you've been with me, because I hadn't known what I was doing, but you have. Thank you for each and every one. I pray, Lord, that the word has been good. I pray, Lord, that people have enjoyed hearing what you have to say. And I just thank you so much for using me. Give each and every one a great blessing that's here and heard my word. Help us go home, be safe, and join us when we can. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Brother Howard.